Kim, K-I-0-E, before we start talking about 14652 Simplex, where did that call sign come from? After I got my extra license, I really wanted to get a shorter call because I do a little bit of contesting. And I'm looking through the list with my wife looking over the shoulder of what's available. I'm, I'm trying to look in the seven call district where I am, but I found this one in the zero. And my wife just picked it out on the screen and says, that's it. And I had to ask her why she wanted it. And my name is Kim. My, the first letters of my name is K-I. Her first name is Elaine. So E with a zero in between us. So it's Kim and Elaine with nothing in between us. I love it. That's great. And is she also a ham operator? Yes, she is. She has her general. She's K-I-7 P-W-R. Fantastic. And my better half is KI4GMU. Well, uh, today I want to talk to you about 14652 Simplex. And we met on the Facebook group, uh, 14652. And it all came about because I was on Mount Mitchell, one of the highest mountains in our area. And I queued it up and I talked to someone in Tennessee. And then my friend said, you need to get in this group. So that's what led us together. And I loved it interview other hams about our passion and love for the hobby. Yeah, I, I really enjoy Simplex and the, the Facebook group, I think, brings a lot of people together and, and gets a lot of communication going on. Let's begin by what is 14652? Well, in the ARO band plan, 14652 is the two meter national calling Simplex for North America. So what it was designed to be is a frequency that you could call out when you, especially if there's no repeaters around and make contacts with other people anywhere in North America. And we talked about it as simplex for people who are new to this, meaning we're sending out and receiving on the same frequency. That's correct. And there's no repeaters involved, which, which makes it a little bit more, not necessarily complicated, but a little harder to make contacts. Yeah, so we're limited to our direct power and the height of our antenna. And then, of course, the, the really the horizon, because there is a little bit of bending and extending that it can occur. But that's part of the excitement of it. It's like being an artist. With limited palettes, you have more demands of creativity. Yes, you do. It's and a great way to describe it. For someone who's not familiar with it, give people an idea about how far it'll transmit and the range. And it's based, most of us usually have anything from about four or five watts up to about 50 watts on the two meter band utilizing this. Well, it, it really varies. Um, to be honest, your elevation matters a lot. As you know, when you talked earlier, you were up on top of that peak. Um, I've personally talked on a, a four watt HT 125 miles from the top of one peak to another. Now that's very unusual. It was nice because we were both on top of a peak. Normally with a with four or five watts, you're usually limited to a few miles depending upon the train. With like a, a 50 watt mobile, 30, 40 miles depending upon the train, maybe a really good contact. But the the actual terrain, as you talked about you know the horizon being important is is very important if you're if you've got line of sight for 100 miles you might be able to make a contact 100 miles but if you've got a hill between you and where you're going you might only be able to get a few miles you know a, a friend recently heard someone calling out on the channel and he was in an airplane going over yeah well, that's that's a fun unfair advantage isn't it <laughs> It is. It is. And it is neat to talk to somebody in an airplane. I, I made a contact um, six months ago. Somebody was flying over overhead and I had just thrown my call out and he responded to me and found out, yeah, he was flying overhead about, he was about a hundred miles south of me, if I remember right. It was a fun contact. Great. Great. And you were able to reach and he could hear you as well. Yes. And he was just using a handheld in his airplane. Yeah, a big advantage. So yeah. for people newer to this, understand a small amount of power at a very high altitude gives us a huge competitive advantage over a lot of power going out, but we don't have the height. And I think that's an important beginning concept in learning about propagation and some of the fun of all of this. It, it is because, you know, like you look at most repeater sites that we use, they're always 
as high up as they can be close to you. You know, they're on the top of a mountain, on the top of the tallest building. They may be up on a 1500 foot tower if there's nothing around there. And that way they can get away with only having, you know, 30 to 50 watts and still communicate out 50 to 100 miles fairly reliably. When we don't have that advantage, it takes a lot of power or a really good antenna system to make up for that, that height. And then there's the possibility of people relaying messages. Again, this is a uh, FM signal. So it's kind of a, a strong signal going out directly, but it's analog. So it's much more robust than many other systems. So in that event that the cell phone towers lock up, and let's say the, there aren't battery backups on our repeaters, this is a simple but primitive method of communication that's very robust. And would you talk a little bit about that? Because I've been in my own environment well, where something happened and the cell phone towers just locked up. I mean, they're data systems. They have only so much bandwidth. And if everyone's trying to get on, they can lock up. And I was able to get through on uh, my amateur radio without any problem. Yeah, I mean, it's something that happens a lot in emergencies and different events. Like we go to a little mountain town in the springtime, they have a big winter festival. And when that's going on, there's so many people in town, the cell phones are worthless because there's, you know, tens of thousands of people on a cell phone system that's made for a town of, you know, 500 people most of the time. Um, you get in an environment like that, any sort of an emergency, a power outage, cell phones are down, repeaters are down. The only communication you have left is simplex, and that's, I mean, that's direct from one person to the other. You're not going through some other system. Um, and, it, and it does take a lot more. You know, you've got you've to know a little more about what you're doing to use it effectively because it's like if the only thing you've got is a handheld and you're out in the middle of nowhere, height makes difference. <laughs> Speaking of 5'2", there's somebody calling out on 5'2 on my radio right here locally. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my radio at my shack is always on 5'2". Yeah. Um, but what I was starting to say with the handheld is I've even found at times with the handheld, if I can't quite get through sometimes, I hold the handheld as high up as I can, and the signal level changes enough that I can understand what they're saying, and they can hear me. And you get people that talk with a, a handheld and like hold it against their chest all the time or something. And they wonder why they never hear anything off of it unless it's a strong repeater signal. So for people who aren't in amateur radio, this does require at least a technician level to be able to use it. It's on what we call the two meter band and the number represents the megahertz, the frequency. Yes. So and what, go ahead. I was going to say just about all of the, inexpensive beginner ham radios that are, that people buy a lot of them are, are dual band but almost all of them support two meters and you can program that frequency into it on every one of them the next question is i'm new i just got my technician license in amateur radio i got my radio it could be one of the less expensive chinese ones this one I purchased recently getting back into the hobby, hobby is a ICOM ID51, and it's dual band plus D star, so it's a little fancier. Uh, and I, I'm and now I have my license. I have the ability to talk on the airways. Let's walk through the process of putting your call sign out on Simplex, like one four six five two. Well, I'm going to start with. There's a lot of what I what I will call controversy on how you should do it because it's there's no rule that says how you're supposed to, but there's etiquette. Um, first thing that I'm going to say, if you want to make a contact, say more than just your call sign. Um, lots of people have fancy radios that may have 100 or 200 different frequencies programmed in, and they're scanning through them all the time. And if you just throw your call sign out there, like if I just say KI0E, if that radio wasn't on that particular channel, they didn't hear me at all. So say something longer than that. Um, what I usually do, like if I'm traveling down the road from somewhere and I want to make a contact with somebody, I'll say, hey, this is KI0E. I'm on Interstate 84 driving north out of Napa, Idaho, looking for a contact. And I want to make sure that it's long enough that if they're scanning, that first off, they're 
radio gets to that particular memory channel and they still hear enough to pay attention to what I'm doing. There's many different ways of doing it. Some people will actually call CQ, which I don't have a problem with that. For those people who don't know, CQ is basically just a shortened form of saying, I want to talk to somebody. And I mean, that's what it means is I want to make a contact with somebody. Saying that on 5-2, I think is perfectly fine. Some people will suggest you start out with something like CQ, CQ, this is KI0E calling CQ on the national calling frequency 14652, CQ, CQ, nice, long. And that way, if anybody picks you up, there's a good chance they're going to respond to you. Because another important thing to remember about simplex versus a repeater, people listen to repeaters, you've almost always got a really strong signal coming into your radio. Most people have their squelch turned up pretty high, so they never hear that annoying static. But when you're talking simplex, you don't have an extra system boosting your signal to make it louder. So it may be real quiet. It might be kind of back in the, the dirt, as they call it, on your radio. <laughs> uh, it's calling so, you, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a guy I've talked to a few times. He guy running home from the auto parts store and threw his call out, and somebody's talking to him. On simplex. On simplex. It's actually my wife, KI7PWR, talking to me right now. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Um, but okay, so what I was talking about was squelch. When you're listening to a repeater, you've always got a really strong signal, and most people don't like to hear the static. So they turn the squelch up so they never hear the static. But when you're on simplex, it may not be a strong signal. So if you got your squelch turned up very, very high, somebody may be calling you back, and you're never going to hear them. So you want to make sure that when you, if you're trying to make a contact on simplex, turn the squelch down so you, all you hear is the static in between. And there's lots of times that you'll just barely pick up the other person and maybe then you can figure out something to, to do it. But if you don't, don't have that squelch down, you'll never hear them. That's such an important point because that's kind of, I, I, I think of that as the noise floor, you know, the background noise. And usually we want to turn it above that, which is a squelch. And for people who aren't as familiar, would you just define what squelch is? Because I want this from ground zero on. <laughs> squelch, it, technically, it's, it's based off of the, the, the electrical level that the receiver is getting on that frequency. But basically what it means is, it's the minimum amount of a signal that the radio needs to get to turn the speaker on to actually listen to it. If the squelch is turned up high, it takes a really loud signal for it to actually turn the speaker on and let you hear it. But if you turn it down really low, you hear all the background noise and everything else that's there. A, a, a lot of handy talkies, like I would imagine yours does, want, next to the push to talk switch, a lot of times there'll be a monitor switch. And what that does is that turns the squelch completely off when you press it and you hear, if nobody's talking, all you hear is static. But that may be what you need to hear the person who's responding to you. I think that's excellent. And there are a few points you brought up I wanna go over. One, put your call sign out long enough and have long enough information that if someone has a scanner going, they might hear it. Because many of us might have what's called a dual band. So we might have the regular repeaters on and the squelch is a little higher. And then we might either have the simplex 14652 on and the squelch is right at the edge or we've got the volume down and a little bit of the hiss coming through so we could hear it. So they're monitoring and listening but it's low. And if you don't say the frequency, if you're driving, you go, well, I heard someone, but I don't know where it is. And so I think there are several important pieces. One, put your call sign out. So I might say, CQ, CQ, this is KI4 CFS, Kilo, India 4, Charlie, Foxtrot, Sierra. I'm on Highway 70 going south, and it's 74 degrees. Uh, and I'm on 14652 simplex. That gives enough data. So if it's scrolling, they can hear it and then give a little pause and listen and then put it out several times. You know, I'm a big advocate of encouraging what I call the lurkers to stop complaining about no one's on the radio and start talking. <laughs> well, I will say anybody who, who says that 
14652 is dead yeah. in their area. It's dead because of them. Because you can't say a frequency is dead if you are transmitting on it. You may right. not be making contacts, but if you're on the air constantly, the frequency is not dead. And if we're all on it constantly, somebody's going to hear you and talk to you. Well, the other cool thing is there are a lot of people get into the hobby that were first monitoring. And so we, in my view, contribute to the hobby and people's awareness by having conversations online. I, because I, one of the gentlemen I, I um, <clears throat> interviewed earlier, he was on the scanners for many, for many years before he got his ham license. And I'll, I have his contact below as well. And he was monitoring for a long time. So, you know, put it out there, put it out several times, give it a little time, put it out again. And I'm amazed how many times if I just have a little patience and listen, someone will come back. Or sometimes you'll hear it comes in where you hear the 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 hiss. I can't quite hear them, but they're there. And it was very exciting. Stat, yeah, you hear a different static, so you know somebody's responding, but you just can't hear anything besides the difference in the static. And part of the excitement of this is the the visceral analog quality of it. It's just like <laughs> I also have an analog Moog synthesizer over here, and you know, and it's it's the attractiveness of getting back to something very simple and non-binary, where you have to listen and pick it out, and that's to me part of the fun of it. But also, I'm I love how the Simplex community I'm now joining more is real receptive and friendly and helps out and and it's eager to help. I was going to the beach and I put in the community that I was there. No one was there, but someone said, well, I'm on this repeater. So if you don't mind, I'm just a little far to reach you. Dial in and you can talk to me. So the, the next thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is this wonderful Facebook community, <laughs> which I'll put the link be below right. that I met you through it. Well, uh, uh, a little history on it. it just a little over a year ago, I started the Facebook group. It's I don't know if that. That's it. There we go. <laughs> I, I got to advertise it. Um, started a Facebook group. It's 14652 National Calling Frequency. It has grown so fast. We're at almost 5,000 members in it right now. We discuss proper etiquette. Sometimes you get debates there. But to me, one of the funnest things to do is just like you talked about. Somebody will post, I'm driving, say, from Portland to Miami. I'm leaving Portland. Monday at 9 a.m. and I'm going through and they'll put some of their major spots at the time that they're going to go through and they call out and they talk to all sorts of different people. Um, had a friend here locally, I'm in Napa, Idaho, had a friend who was driving over to Portland and he had told me what he was doing and he had commented that he very seldom makes a comp contact on Simplex. And I told him to, to stop up at the top of a big mountain that the highway goes over. And I posted on our group that the approximate time that I thought he was going to be there. And he had a lot of people listening to him. He made five contacts from the top of that mountain. And he had never made contacts like that before. And it was all from this community of people that are paying attention and trying to help everybody learn and have fun. There are also sometimes kind of band openings that occur. I see some maps yes. where they go further. Would you talk a little bit about the science and technology of that, where the excitement is you get to go much further than usual? There are certain atmospheric conditions, and I'll be honest, I'm nowhere close to an expert or, real, or very knowledgeable on it, but there are certain atmospheric conditions where the signal, just like an HF signal, will bounce back and forth inside the atmosphere and come out somewhere else. I know um, there was one a few months ago down in the Florida area that people were regularly making 200 mile contacts with normal, you know, 50 watt radios. Um, I think the record right now is like almost a thousand miles on two meters during one of these ducting. But there'll be times that you'll be like listening on 5.2 or even some other repeater frequency, and all of a sudden you'll hear somebody coming in that sounds like they're in your local area. And they're talking about like some geographic location that's 200 miles away from you. And that's, I mean, it's kind of like the aircraft one. It, it's neat to, to get in, in on these little ducting events or sporadic E, whatever it is that's causing it. But 
there are times that you can talk for hundreds of miles on two meters. There's one more thing I want to talk about that and QSL cards. Do they send them on Simplex? Can you? Or also just using the online log? But yes, you can. Um, there's no reason not to. Most people do not. But I have sent some out and I've logged them online when they're more special ones, like when I made the contacts over 100 miles, to me, I wanted to make sure that I remembered that. So I logged it and I sent out a QSL card. If you send out a QSL card for every contact you make, you're going to go broke just in postage fees because there's times that I can make 40 or 50 contacts in one day on 5-2 if I'm up on a, a peak somewhere. But to me, it's anytime it's something special that you want to remember or special for the other side, please log it. Please send them a, a QSL card. They will love it. Yeah, and you could put it in qrz.com and then come back and send it out. That's the yes. means. And that's just the easy, quick, you know, capture it for the future or whatever your favorite logging software is. Yes. Well, the, the thing I want to close with on this is – this is a great frequency to get on to start because if you're trying to figure out a new radio, dialing in the frequency and being <laughs> press the little button and transmit on 14652, even if you can't figure out how to save it in memory, you can at least put it on that and start transmitting as a new AM right yep. away before you figure out the, the um, repeaters because for new hams, the radios are sometimes a little complicated. It's not like a cell phone. You got to learn something on it. Then you have to add the repeater. Then the repeater might need a tone. The concept of repeaters, a little more complicated. This is simple. You got one frequency. Keep throwing it out there and see if someone will talk to you. Yes, and, and it's fun. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, in our local area, we have a lot of people who do soda activations, which you go to a summit and do an activation. And there's quite a few of them now that, they just, anytime they're out hiking with their family, they take their handheld just like that. They get to the soda, they call out on 5-2. And luckily this area, there's lots of people that listen and they get their activation done. And it's and it's simple, just like you said. I mean, you don't have to, to worry about tones, offsets. You just punch in 14652 and go. Um, one thing I do want to kind of add is there's also calling frequencies on all of the other bands. There's 223.500, which is the 1.25 meter. There's 446, which is the 70 centimeter. 927.1, I think, is the, the 33 centimeter. Um, they're all used the same way, but one big difference is more hams have two meter radios than some of these other bands. And in general, two meters will travel a lot farther on the same equipment so you get more distant contacts, but they're all fun. You know, if, if we find a, a link for that, I'd love to put it in the message area below too. So we'll okay. I'll, get that. I'll get you one because I actually have a Facebook page for the 223 and 446 calling frequency. Okay, we'll put them all in there below to find out. So we, you know, people can find out about it. But I think Simplex is a great beginning place. It's a great for a moderate. I'm a general. I am seeing if I can get the extra. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm smart enough or willing to put enough time in. That's, to be honest. Yeah. That's a big thing. Uh, and and it's a place to begin that's fun. And thank you so much for this. Any other closing comments, I'll make sure to put the links below. And I do invite people, if we didn't answer a question, put it in on the YouTube channel. And one of us will see if we can answer it too. Sounds, sounds good to me. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for plugging our Facebook group and community. I think we've got a great group of people in there. And we have a lot of fun. Well, Kim, it's great talking to you. And thanks for trusting someone you just found on social media <laughs> and agreeing to do this. This is my commitment of the channel. I've gotten back into the hobby. And since I have a business marketing uh, background, I thought, how can I apply these principles to contribute to a hobby that coming back to it, 
I think I love it even more than when I got into it because I've been in the social space and everything else. And I just want to say people are nicer on the radio than maybe even the same people on the, on the discussion groups or something. So if you want to meet nice people on average that will help you out and seem like good old great citizens, I still think most of them are found on ham radio. And I want to promote that and support it as well. I agree with you completely, and, and so do I. I have so much fun on it, and I mean, I just love being able to to share my enjoyment with other people like all of your your subscribers out there. Excellent. Well, thanks, and uh, great, and I look forward to maybe one day talking to you on Simplex, and uh, we'll see you all in the community, and thanks for the moderating of the community, because I have had communities, and people don't realize there's a lot of background work to keep them going, make them great. I want to tell people, if you join the community, make sure to get all notifications because Kim's in there trying to keep it quality. And if there's ever something uh, negative or wrong, let the moderators know. They want to keep it positive and supportive, and it takes a lot of work and appreciate them. So thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you. I've got a, I've got a good team that helps me out, and it yeah. makes it so much easier. Excellent. Uh, can I plug one person who helped support? The Absolutely. Group? You can plug uh, anybody here. We're here to thank you, people. Go ahead. You guys saw the, the shirt. Um, this was designed by a ham who, who sells stuff. It's Miss Maggie's um, Etsy shop. I guess that's how you pronounce it. The guy is wonderful and donates stickers and stuff to me to give away in the group. So we're coming up on 5,000 members here real soon. So I'm going to, I got a bunch of stickers to give out. It's just kind of freebies do different, drawings and raffles just to kind of help generate excitement and the, the stickers are kind of like my license plate cool um, I don't have the the call sign but it'll just say one four six five two i'm listening yeah i love it that sounds great and i'll we'll we'll put those links below as well okay well Thank this you. is this is Martin, KI4CFS, and Kim, KI0E. And appreciate you listening. If you like it, subscribe, click the bell, and share it. And I look forward to having other great people on the show, too, to talk about what's great about amateur radio and share our love and passion for it.